from traveling outside the country on my own to being in a plane in over 16 years to visiting Auckland, passing out on the plane, experiencing ExilCon 2023, seeing content creators live in person on top of having had great chats with other exiles and more coming up in this video. The gods caused all this, you know. Who are you? Hello and welcome. I'm back from Auckland, New Zealand and ExilCon 2023. Boy, am I exhausted. <laughs> also, look at this corner. Look at all the stuff that's there. Isn't that, isn't that sick? I still don't feel 100% back to my full power. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of like, I, I feel like I have a travel debuff now. You know, chat lag and... I don't know what else I have. Without further ado, let's jump into me traveling to and from New Zealand and what happened on the plane. I'm sorry, by the way, if I sometimes look away to the side, like right now to my script. Uh, there's so much to talk about and I don't want to like miss something, so I wrote it all down. So I was clearly a madman, by the way, for going to ExileCon or even buying a ticket for ExileCon because, you know, I kind of underestimated a 15 hour long flight <laughs> and that wasn't everything right 15 hours was the long one there was a shorter one which was like five ish hours from vienna to dubai and then dubai to auckland was the big one before we talk about the flight let's talk about the traveling in itself and then the hotel going through the gates and finding myself and all the check-ins and security and all this jazz was actually easy kind of like drawing by numbers everything is marked very well in vienna dubai and auckland and if your plane ticket says you should go to gate four then you just go to gate four it's all straightforward and simple and there's just a lot of waiting my hotel was the quest auckland serviced apartments it's a strange name on queen street and it was okay you know nothing fancy uh, a bit pricey, I think around 125 New Zealand dollars, or maybe it was euros, I don't even know anymore. It was very close to the center where Exalcon was, like five minutes away or whatever. Back to the plane ride, I had some enjoyable moments. So it's just interesting to me seeing the technical marvel of a plane. The immense amount of energy, you know, when it just starts the engines and you, you just take off. It was kind of fun. It's not like fun in a roller coaster kind of way because you're still trapped in this metal box, but it was still kind of fun. <laughs> Speaking of being trapped in a metal box, I'm glad I chose Emirates. That's the worst transition ever. Anyways, Emirates was a good decision. Uh, obviously not sponsored, I'm just saying. I just heard good stuff about them and I was like, screw it, you know, I gotta, I gotta risk flying with someone. And yeah, Emirates was a really good decision because the... 15 hour long flight from Dubai to Auckland or 17 hour long flight from Auckland to Dubai was not fun. But Emirates just has amazing staff that really try to make the experience the best it can be. I mean, it's a 15 hour long flight inside a big metal box that likes to shake. It can only be this good, but I got multiple meals, snacks, coffee, water bottles on the long flights all included i mean i also paid like over two thousand euros so there better be something but i think you get the point one caveat would be i had no internet unless i paid 21.99 or something like this for unlimited data for the entire flight or 10 bucks for 30 minutes of unlimited data I hope they can make that free in the future, not that I'm gonna fly soon again, you know, but still, even just one Mbit download, you know, per second would just make the flight way better, right? You could just chat with people, you know, maybe read up on some news, uh, check the memes channel on my Discord, seriously, join my Discord, or else. <laughs> now, the point I mentioned in the intro... I passed out on a plane. Uh, after a few hours on the plane, I, you know, ha having eaten the breakfast. No, I think that was lunch. Uh, they gave us lunch. I felt strange, very cold, and generally not good. I finally decided to just, you know, ask my guy, you know, sit partner on the, uh, on the right, if he could stand up. He did. I grabbed my tray, 
and I was slowly walking towards the crew member, you know, in the little aisle that you have between the seats. And I passed out and fell backwards or sideways. I actually don't know. There's this three second period in my memory that is just blank where I stood with my tray. Everything got shaky and wobbly and I was suddenly on the ground. <laughs> yeah, the crew of Emirates really looked out for me. They quickly did all the checks, you know, put me to the side and I bounced back quickly and it was totally my fault by the way because I didn't drink enough water, I was sleep deprived and I also just ate so maybe my blood sugar was also kind of whack. I don't think I hit my head because I don't, I didn't feel like anything. I obviously still had a headache probably from still falling down and my body just trying to like manage itself. I think nothing major happened. I still went to the doctor just to make sure, but I think I'm good. Maybe. I mean, I still feel a little bit strange now after being at home for a few days, but I think my body's just like all over the place. Let's just say I'm good, all right? <laughs> I feel like I'm making this sound way worse. Anyways, how the heck do I move on to the next topic now? Welcome. To the halls of the dead. Earn your place among us. ExileCon. I think that was my first gaming convention, to be honest. And I really enjoyed it, because it was specific to Path of Exile, and not just games in general. This made it so much easier to start chatting, because we all had something in common, no matter if you're hardcore, SSF, Standard League, we all just enjoyed the same game. Skipping a little bit ahead, the, the, the energy on the, at the first keynote was just amazing. You know, the moment Kriparin came out, there was already like some buzz. And the moment, there was this, I think like one second silence when Chris also walked out right before he said, you know, Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. The, the room just exploded, you know, it was just, it was beautiful. <laughs> One thing I'm missing from re-watching the live stream was the audience reaction. You hear and see nothing of that. I really enjoyed this at the first ExileCon and you can like re-watch that live stream and you hear that reaction, right? That's kind of why I watch a live stream because I can always watch the trailer that is clean and cut off from the audience, right? That it's, it is its own thing. But I watch a live stream to hear the reaction, to hear the sounds of the audience. But sadly, that wasn't the case. Something that you also probably didn't know when you only watched the live stream were the lines for the demos. Oh my god, they were long. <laughs> so we're talking like an hour or longer of wait time, especially if you went later during the day. I thankfully stood in line for around like only 20 minutes at day two. So I woke up at 9.30, I went there and instantly went to the demos. I did nothing else. I was like, I'm gonna play the demo. It's day two. It's the last day of ExileCon. I'm gonna play the demo no matter what. Thankfully, only 20 minutes of wait time. And yeah, more on how I enjoyed the demos, Path of Exile 2 and Mobile, on uh, in the next video. So subscribe for that. Please. No, please, really. <laughs> One aspect of ExileCon that I just completely ignored was the card game. Not because I didn't enjoy it or, you know, it didn't, well, or it didn't seem fun enough to interact with it, but like learning a card game standing in line, which I heard were super long, just didn't really seem worth it, especially when there were so many interesting panels, meet and greets, and two demos to play. Speaking of panels, I shouldn't have watched those in person, not because they weren't interesting, especially the talk about rendering, uh, because I love seeing how something works. It's just I'm the technical guy, I just really like seeing this stuff. But because of how little time there was to experience everything to its fullest, you lose so many hours watching them, and in the end, you can just watch them later on YouTube. There's a positive and negative about the panels, because if you're in person, right there, 
there are so many other better things to do than being at the panels, which you can rewatch anyways. But if you're really interested in one panel, then I think it might be worth going there because at the end you can ask questions which you couldn't do during a live stream. Like they didn't show you the QR code. There was a massive QR code like on the wall, like on the, the whatever the heck, on the beamer. Yeah, you just didn't saw that during the live stream. I wonder why. Maybe because I think there were like, what, 100,000 live viewers and that might have spammed the, the list a bit, you know? <laughs> Everyone would have just asked uh, patch notes when. Now the meet and greets would have been fun if I didn't miss so many of them because of the panels on day one or just because how quickly an hour goes by when you walk around and check stuff out. Because an hour of meet and greet isn't really long, especially if you also have to wait like 30 minutes to even meet someone. Because keep in mind, you're not the only person wanting to meet Cizeren, Gassy, Chris, Bex, Subtractum, or anyone else who was there, right? Speaking of Subtractum, man, my segues are on fire today. Here's the sauce, the tea, the tea if you will. Subtractum was super down to earth. You know, we had a little chat, or I kind of bothered him, to be honest, probably. So yeah, I just talked to him, you know, I chatted him up, and yeah, we just had a brief chat, like, for 10 minutes, he, like, actually stopped walking, chatted with me about, like, content creation, how he's doing, and yeah, again, he was super down-to-earth, I was very happy that he talked to me, so thank you. Uh, I also saw Kitten Cat Noodle with her friend, and yeah, we had just a brief conversation, I think that was also after she had that developer talk with Matt. By the way, highly recommend checking that out. Matt also just casually dropped that Alva is or was or will be the last to die. You know, it's time travel, it's weird. But he just casually dropped that like, what the heck? <laughs> she was super nice. So thanks for taking the time to talk to me. She also gave me a pin. I like it. Uh, speaking of pin, uh, I got another one from Balor. B Balor, <laughs> how the how the heck do I hold this? <laughs> also, thanks to Balor for just you know taking his time to talk to me, chat briefly right after the convention. And while I was talking to him, Coffee Powered, a moderator in a lot of Twitch chats, just casually just you know ask, "Are you Daniel Br?" And I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> it was kind of weird hearing that out loud in person. You know, I was like. Who? <laughs> Jokes aside, thanks for coming up and, you know, just saying hi and chatting with me briefly. Now, here's the most embarrassing part, but I will tell it, you know, I will say it anyways. I missed a lot of meet and greets, like for example, Chris and Bex. And as you guys may know, I listened to the soundtrack of Path of Exile and even the trailers while I work out. I, I think I mentioned this regularly on stream. Who did I not find the entire convention? Camille. When did I find him? Right after the convention, outside, with his, I think, friends that weren't, I think, from GGG. So, his friends outside of the company. I feel so bad disturbing him, but I'm glad he took, like, five minutes to talk to me and even took a picture where I look high as fuck and... <laughs> I don't know what to talk to people, right? I don't want to go up to everyone and be like, thanks, and then walk away. It kind of is, is, is more awkward, right? I really appreciate what he does, but I just don't know how to say that without being awkward as fuck. But I did briefly just talk to him, I think, about Hollow Knight, because that's another game I really love. So here comes the embarrassing part. Uh, the picture that you see right now, probably on screen, uh, someone took that picture, and uh, the person that came closer and asked, do you want me to take that picture for you? And I was like, sure, that would be great, thank you. Um, and if you want a picture of Camille and yourself, I would happily take the picture for you, right? So I offered pretty much, I gave him that offer, right? So he takes a picture of me and Camille, I will take a picture of him and Camille, right? It's kind of nice. <sighs> I said that to Camille's colleague. He's literally part of the sound design team for Path of Exile. If I could have ran away like a kiwi, I would have. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that was the most embarrassing fucking part. Fuck me. <laughs>
Another fun aspect of ExileCon was uh, meeting exiles or, you know, other convention goers outside of the convention, you know, just like at lunch and you just chat them up and you just have a good conversation, maybe even walk back to the convention and you, it's just like, because we all have something in common, Path of Exile, that doesn't happen during a normal convention, because I like Path of Exile, at Gamescom someone else might Call of Duty, the other person likes Apex Legends, and the other person likes Sims or whatever, right? So it's like, you can never talk to someone and expect to like the same thing. But at ExileCon, that is a thing. And that is just, that is a very unique thing that usually isn't possible anywhere else. There was also the Discord for ExileCon made by GGG, which was also a great idea because I met up at Tanuki Cave at day one. And yeah, it was just an underground um, Japanese bar. Had some good food, some good drinks, some nice chat back and forth. Uh, was just a good time for like two, three hours. Just really enjoyed that. I'm really happy that they took their time and yeah, I will probably never forget that. Briefly mentioning this because it felt a little bit surreal to me. Um, on Monday, so one day after the convention, I met up with some other exiles for one last lunch before I left Auckland. Uh, Gassy and Grimroll joined right outside of the hotel and soon after going to that restaurant to uh, a burger chain, uh, Scissorin, Karn, Pie by Pie, and Tai Tai just all came by. And I'm like, what the flying heck is happening right now? Like, I didn't saw any of them. I think I did see, no, I did see Pie by Pie briefly. Um, by the way, her cosplay of Lyceo is, or was, amazing absolutely incredible and yeah it's just kind of surreal seeing them just outside casually like i know there are people obviously but to me it was kind of surreal maybe i'm weird i'm weird i'm yeah i'm weird now the biggest question would i go again if there's XLCon 2026 2027 whatever would i go again would i spend or pay thousands of euros and bunch of hours to travel back and forth to do this all over again in short i probably wouldn't not because i didn't enjoy my time but time and money is still a thing my time isn't really that much worth let's be honest but money is still money and i may not look like it but I actually i don't like spending that much money Yes, my 3090 Ti in my PC might say otherwise, but I also get an instant benefit from that, right? From playing a game, making videos, editing, rendering, blah, blah, blah. But going on a vacation and spending 15 bucks every lunch, you know, I feel a little bit, uh, feel a little bit weird. So if for some reason I earn way more or the big expenses are being taken care of by someone. Yeah, I might do it again, but as it stands right now with my current income, probably not. Still, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm glad I did it. Even if my bank account is screaming right now. <laughs> At least I got some cool merch. Worth. All right, this is the outro. You have to stay, you have to watch this part, you can't click away now. Anyways, my next video will be about Path of Exile 2 and mobile and the demos I played and also the 3.22 expansion. And yeah, so subscribe for that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.